Hello, everyone, and welcome to Earth Echo's Snack Size Science today. My name is Casey, and I'll be your host. Now, before we get started, I do just want to uh, add a little disclaimer. If we experience any technical issues today, please just hang tight with us. Be patient. We'll be right back. Uh, there are lots of people using the internet these days, so please just bear with us if we do experience any technical issues. Now, also, this video is being recorded, so you can come right back here to Earth Echo's YouTube channel to check it out again. Uh, we will even post it to our website a little bit later on at earthecho.org. All right, everyone. Well, let's get started with today's snack-sized science, diving in to ocean zones. All right, everyone. So here are the supplies we're going to need today. We will need a clear jar. Now we're going to be building different layers of ocean zones in our jar. We're going to need some food coloring. Blue and green are the most important here today. If you have red or yellow, that might be helpful too. If you have black food coloring, you might just earn a bonus point. Um, some type of heavy syrup you'll need, like molasses is really great. Also, if you just have something like a heavy corn syrup or a honey, that works as well. Um, also, dish detergent or dish soap. I recommend clear so you can play around with the colors a little bit with our food coloring. But if you have dish soap that's already blue, that is perfectly fine. Hey, if you have one that's green, that might work as well. You will also need some canola oil or cooking oil, something like vegetable oil. You will definitely need some rubbing alcohol. You will also need some water. You might want to have a funnel on hand. It's sometimes helpful when you're handling and, and making our little ocean zones. You will also need a spoon a dropper or a turkey baster, and please, please grab some towels. This is a really messy and sticky um, uh, demonstration that we're doing today, but it's a whole lot of fun. Now, one optional item I have for you is milk. Now, we recommend using non-dairy milk. Today, I'm using almond milk. Uh, this is a fun recipe. We actually have two recipe of our ocean zones that we're going to be making today. So if you have milk, you're going to experiment alongside with me because I've got to confess to you that I have never done this experiment with or this demonstration with milk before. So this is going to be fun. So let's get started and let's talk about those zones that we find in the ocean. Now, scientists and oceanographers have divided the ocean into zones based on how far light reaches through that water. The sunlight, or epipelagic zone, is the one that's the closest to the surface, and it's the best lit. Now, this zone extends down around 600 feet, and it supports a lot of life that you might think of when we say the words ocean animals. This is where we're going to find a lot of our whales, our sharks, our dolphins, our coral reefs, fish like marlin and um, swordfish. So a lot of animals that you might be familiar with should be living or will probably be living in that sunlight zone. Now, the reason for this is because the base of the ocean food web, plankton, this is where that's found. Phytoplankton is found in that sunlight zone as well as zooplankton. Now, due to the darkness of the zones past that sunlight zone, the life that lives there, the organisms have adapted to live in these various depths in many different ways. For example, some organisms that survive in the deep ocean they might not have eyes, while other organism, organisms might make their own light using bioluminescence. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna learn all about the different zones in the ocean. And I think it's a pretty cool way to learn about these different ocean zones by building them out. And so we're gonna talk about each of these zones as we build them out in our jars. Now we did talk about that sunlight zone, but I didn't mention the other ones to follow. So we're gonna build our sunlight zone, our twilight zone, midnight zone, the abyss, and down in the trench. Now we're gonna do this a little odd today. We're actually going to be building from the bottom of the ocean up. So we're not going to start with that sunlight zone that I first told you about, but rather we're going to start way down in the trenches. Now again, I want to remind you of the ingredients that you will need. And again, we do have an optional ingredient of milk. So I just want to point out, if you do have that milk, you're going to have to hang tight in the beginning because we will build our um, 
our jar a little bit later on. So just hang tight. If you do have that milk, it's going to be fun. I promise you it's worth the wait. So what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to work our way from the bottom of the ocean all the way up to the top. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that very bottom of the ocean, the trench. So in this zone, the trench, it's also known as the hadopelagic zone. And this is the deepest region of the ocean lying within oceanic trenches. So this zone is found as deep as 36,000 feet. And it exists in very long, narrow V-shaped depressions along that ocean floor. Now, most trench habitat is found in the Pacific Ocean, a very famous trench habitat is the Marianas Trench. And many of these habitats are unexplored. Now down in the trench, you might find creatures like isopods, bristle worms, and even some fish like we have pictured here. That's a cusk eel on the right, and there's an isopod on the upper left. Now these animals have adapted with adaptations to, have, to withstand high pressure and very low temperatures. It's very cold down in the trenches. So now what we're going to do is we are going to make our trench. So again, for those of you who do not have, or who have milk, hang tight. Do not follow these instructions. I say again, if you have milk, do not follow these instructions. All right, well, let's head over to my document camera here so we can get my mason jar all set up. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with this clear mason jar. And what we're gonna do for our trench is we're gonna add probably our thickest ingredient that we have on our list. We're gonna use some syrup. Now, if you do have molasses, great, because it is a really deep, deep dark color and you don't have to do anything to it. But I actually have here, I have corn syrup as well. So I just want to demonstrate that we can indeed color this corn syrup. So we're gonna grab those food colors right now if you have black, this is where you'll need it. Okay, so let's head on back over to my little setup. And I'm gonna start by making our trench by pouring in just a little layer, just enough so we can see it on the side and it's covering the bottom. There we go. I'm gonna pour in that corn syrup. Now I did mention that I do have black food coloring. So this should come out really nice and dark. This might be a lot of fun. Now, if you only have the primary food colors, go ahead and start dropping in that blue. You might need a lot depending on what kind of syrup you're working with. Um, and feel free to even use the other colors like red, or even that green, maybe it'll get it a little bit darker. All right, what do you guys think? I think I'm gonna drop one more drop of black in here, just to make sure that this syrup is nice and dark to represent the trench where no sunlight shines. All right, again, I'm using a chopstick to mix up my syrup. I really love using chopsticks for all my science demonstrations because they're just, they're really easy to clean. We have reusable chopsticks at my house. So they're super easy to clean and, um, and they definitely help a lot. So we can use that chopstick again. All right, so there we have our trench in our jar. Now again, those of you who have milk, just hang tight because we're gonna come back to you in just a second. All right, everyone, so now, why don't we go ahead and we're gonna visit the next zone on our list, we're gonna start making our way to the surface and we're gonna stop at the abyss. So in this zone, this word abyss derives from Greek and it means bottomless. And this zone can be as deep as 19,000 feet. And this zone still remains in perpetual darkness. Now, since there is no light, there are no plants. And by the way, there's no plants in those trenches either. And since there are no plants to go through photosynthesis or produce oxygen, basically the sea floor is devoid of oxygen in that abyss. Now, this is where we will find a lot of dead organic material that will drift down from the other ocean layers down to the abyss zone. Now, I have pictured some organisms here that I want to talk about. Now, I really want to talk about uh, the organism on the bottom right, and that is a whale fall. 
this is an amazing habitat. So what that is, it was once an organism. This is the carcass of a whale that died. And that carcass basically fell down through all the zones and ended up in the abyss at the seafloor. Now, if you look real closely, you can see lots of eels, different worms, perhaps some octopus. Um, lots of creatures will feed on this decaying and decomposing material. It's really amazing. Whale falls are one of the weirdest, grossest, and creepiest things you can find in the ocean. Happens to be one of my favorite things you can study and look at and see all sorts of different life. It's truly fascinating. Now, there's a lot of other animals that are found down in the abyss, and a lot of these animals will feed on decomposing matter. And some examples of animals that have adapted to live in this area uh, are something like an anglerfish or a gulper eel, both pictured here. Now, many of these animals down in the abyss, they can even make their own light, and that is called bioluminescence. Here you can see a bioluminescing jelly on the right. Now, animals can use this light not only to maybe help them see if they can see, but also bioluminescence will help them to attract prey, to lure them in, can even attract a mate, and they can even hide from predators using bioluminescence, if you can believe it. Scientists believe that over 90% of life in the abyssal zone use some form of bioluminescence. That's pretty amazing. Now I should note before we start building our abyss that this part of the ocean, as you can see on our chart, makes up a huge chunk of the zones. This is a really big space. In fact, about 83% of our oceans are abyss. So with this next layer, we are going to make it a little bit larger, a lot larger than those trenches. Okay, so we are going to start by making our abyss. Now, for those of you who have milk, here's where we're gonna get started with ours. Okay, so let me hop back over here to my document camera and let me get all set up for those of you who are now going to join us with that extra ingredient milk. So let me just go ahead, slide our original one over. Everybody who already made your trenches, hang tight please we will get back to you in just a second but right now i want to get moving with our other group that has milk okay so we are going to use our milk to represent the abyss now we're gonna want to make that milk a different color so what i've done here huh, kind of reminds me of one of my favorite movies they drink blue milk <laughs> um, what we're going to do here is you're going to take that blue food coloring and you're going to dye your milk a deep blue, we want it to stand apart from our trenches, and we also, uh, we want it to stand apart from our trenches. So, deep blue milk, I even, I think I did six drops of blue in this one, and I also added two drops of black, if you have black food coloring, and it came out with this really, really cool color. That reminds me of my favorite movie. So what we're gonna do, the group with the milk, we are now going to go ahead and we're going to pour that milk, into our empty mason jar. Okay, well this is looking a little bit different from that other group that we've already got started. So what are we missing in this jar? Are we missing a layer? I think so. We're missing that abyss, aren't we? Okay, so here's where the fun part comes in. This is hopefully going to be dramatic. And I haven't tried this yet, so this is going to be fun to see if this actually works. So now we're going to grab our syrup. So again, if you have something like corn syrup, you're going to go ahead and dye this a really deep, dark color. So you can use that black food coloring or a lot of blue, and you can play around with some of the other colors. I also happen to have some molasses. So I'm going to try using this, and we're going to see what this does. Okay, so we are going to catch up with the trenches, and we are going to add our trench layer. But how are we going to do that? This is so weird. It needs to go underneath the abyss, you say. Well, check this out, and I am hoping this works. Now, this corn syrup or molasses is a whole lot denser than that milk. So, yes! Oh, it looks so good. So as we pour that molasses in, it should go right underneath that layer of the abyss. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at how awesome this looks. Okay, trenches, I know, I know, you have to get caught up here. So what are you all gonna use to catch up to our abyssal zone? 
Well, let's get out that dish detergent or dish soap. Now, again, you're gonna want to dye that dish soap a color that's gonna stand apart from that abyssal zone. So we've got a really dark abyss. Hmm, what do you guys think? This is kind of too dark. I actually have another detergent right here that's a little bit lighter. Which one should I try? I think I'm gonna try this lighter one and then I'll re-dye because we're gonna use detergent in the milk jar. Okay, so I've got my detergent here. And in fact, if you have blue detergent, you are probably good to go. But add some blue uh, food dye to that detergent and you're gonna go ahead and we are going to pour it over the top of our, a bit, our trenches. But I do wanna give you a pro tip here. Grab that spoon. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a spoon to kind of slow down the flow of your detergent just so it pours in nice and slow. So we're gonna add our detergent layer in and this is representing our abyss over our trenches. And by the way, those who are watching on YouTube, if you have any questions about what we're doing, go ahead and type that in the chat and we have Earth Echo staff monitoring it and they can definitely help you out. Now, you know, I'm not too happy with that abyssal zone because it's not as thick as the one on the left. So I'm going to add in that dark detergent that I had before and just hope that my layers stand out from one another. Okay, how's it looking out there? All right, trenches on the bottom. Abyss is on the top. And you know what? I'm gonna keep that there for a second while you're working and I'm gonna add just a little bit more detergent to this one as well. All right, I hope this is working for you all. And hey, feel free to play around with these colors. I went with ocean colors, blues and greens. So feel free if you wanna even use primary colors, that works out too and it'll work just fine and you'll really see these layers separate. It's kind of fun to be doing two of different ones right now, just so we can see how different they look from one another. Okay, we're fairly even there on our zones. So we are going to continue up in the ocean and we're gonna keep traveling north towards the surface. So. I hope you guys are ready to join me because we are heading to the midnight zone. So in the midnight zone, again, we're moving closer to the surface, but we still don't have sunlight here. Now the midnight zone, the, it derives from Greek and it means deep. Now the midnight zone can extend to depths of about 13,000 feet below the ocean surface. It's still pretty chilly down here and sunlight does not reach this zone and there are no known plants because of the lack of sunlight. And really that's how it got its name, the midnight zone. Now because of the lack of light, many species here, um, they might not have eyes. And those who do have eyes in this zone include animals that you see pictured here like the viper fish and the frill shark. Now living at this depth, you'll even find squid and octopus. And in the midnight zone is where you'll find some of the world's largest whales feeding. Hmm, who could those be? And what are they eating? Now many animals here are not threatened by predators and um, that's because a lot of the predators can't see them. And so since they're not really threatened by predators, they really don't have very powerful muscles. So their bodies typically have weak muscles, soft skin, and they're slimy. So other adaptations of some of these creatures that like, live here might be small eyes and even transparent skin. Okay, so you guys ready? We're gonna add the midnight zone to our jars. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna start off with the jar that does not have milk. Okay, so the jar that does not have milk in it, we're gonna start off with you and what you're gonna wanna grab is that water. Now again, we're gonna wanna dye that water blue. You might wanna keep it a deep blue. We're gonna hope that it contrasts with that, um, where did we go? We went to the abyss and the trenches beneath. I've already dyed my water here. And so let's hope that it shows up and gives us a nice, nice layer. Now, those of you who have milk in your jars, we're gonna come to you next. And if you wanna get a jump start, you can start dyeing your dish soap or your dish detergent. Okay, so again, 
the jar without milk. We're gonna start with you and we're gonna use water and hopefully you've dyed that water a color that's not quite as dark as that abyss. Now I am going to use my turkey baster. If you have a dropper, this might work well. I'm just gonna use this so I can kind of slowly control the amount of water that's going into my ocean jar. So it might work out a little bit better than just pouring it in. Or, you know, if you trust yourself or if you have an adult nearby, you could even just start to slowly pour that in. Give me a second here, I'm gonna switch hands. All right, and then folks with the milk jar, we're gonna use detergent next. So if you want to start dyeing detergent, go right ahead. Again, I told you this is messy. So I'm gonna fill that up and hope that our zones part. All right, so we're looking good here. Okay, so those of you with the milk in your jar, grab that detergent. Hopefully you have it dyed a nice color. And I have a feeling I'm gonna need more detergent. Well, actually, maybe not for this though. So um, I've got mine a nice blue color. Hopefully it'll set aside and separate from that abyss that we have. So here goes the midnight zone. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do? I didn't use my pro tip of using the spoon. I hope that doesn't affect what my midnight zone looks like. Again, I've never done this one with milk, so I'm really, really curious to see how this one turns out. You know what, while you're working on yours, I am gonna add just a little bit more detergent to mine to see if we can get a little bit more of a dramatic layer for our midnight zone. So again, just to review, trench is at the very bottom, then we have our abyss, and now we're working on our midnight zone. Still no sunlight in these zones in the ocean. It's pretty amazing. And again, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them in that YouTube chat and our staff right there can help you out. All right, let's hope that that one calms down a little bit and we get a little separation because my friends, we are going to keep swimming towards the surface and we are now gonna take a stop at the twilight. All right, let's head over there and see what we've got. Now the Twilight Zone, if you ask me, is a pretty cool, amazing place in the ocean. So this zone is actually defined by light. And this zone begins at the depth where only 1% of light reaches. And then the zone ends where there is no light. So the depth of this zone is typically between about 650 feet to 3,000 feet. So this zone is defined by light. And it is home to a diverse community that includes things like blobfish, bioluminescent jellies, giant squid, and many other unique organisms that have adapted to live in low light. Okay, so I've got news for you guys. It's good news too. We're gonna add in our twilight zone. And from here on out, both of our recipes will be using the same exact ingredients moving forward. So to add in our twilight zone, we are going to use that vegetable oil or canola oil. Now, interesting thing I realized as I was making the, this demonstration is that food coloring is actually water-based. So what do you think that's going to do in our cooking oil? Probably guessed right. It's gonna separate. So I've added many, many drops of food coloring into my vegetable oil that you see here. And it just kind of separates. If you ask me, it looks kind of cool. So I'm gonna go with the flow of this and I'm gonna add this oil to represent our twilight. Now, I think it's kind of fun because even though it doesn't really fully color this vegetable oil, we just talked about a lot of organisms that are found living here in the twilight zone. So let's think of all these little blobs of food coloring as blobfish or squid or jellies, animals that we can find in this zone. So go ahead and you can get creative. If you have different food coloring colors, 
go ahead and add them in and see what it does. See if they mix together, see if you can get them to stay separated. I think it's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do now is we will be using that dropper or turkey baster. And we're going to slowly add the oil, the twilight zone, to both of our jars. Okay, so back over to my little demonstration. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and, well, no, let me move that out of the way a little bit. Okay, so here is my oil, and I'm going to use my turkey baster. <laughs> I love it. It is like a bunch of organisms that are just kind of hanging out and swimming around. Now, here is a fun technique, is try and, don't just squirt it all in at the same time, but try and slowly, oh, there's a big jelly that's gonna drop in. Slowly disperse your oil by kind of going around and around the edge. Are we seeing our twilight zone form? Ooh, this is cool. All right, and you can keep using more. Uh, we recommend for each of these ingredients about two thirds of a cup, um, but really you can play around with it and you can, you know, maybe you're in the Marianas Trench and so your trench is really big and then you want to add the other zones up on top. So we're going to just keep adding our oil. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat. And don't worry, you guys, if you need to watch this again, this video will be right here on Earth Echo's YouTube channel. So don't worry about that. And thankfully, I have a second stash of oil that I can use for my jar with my milk. I want to get a nice, good, finished product for both of these guys. All right, how's everybody doing out there? Following along okay? How are your zones looking? Is anybody using different colors? Are you getting creative? Tell us about that. What are you using? All right. Doing a good job with these oils separating. Oh, I really hope that my detergent separates a little bit more in my milk. Now I do wanna say you guys can keep these. Um, the ocean zones in a jar, you can keep the one especially that does not have milk, you can put a lid on it after we're done and you can keep it to kind of admire or show off your work. The one with the milk in it, I gotta say, I wouldn't keep very long. Um, if you use non-dairy milk, that's not as big of an issue as if you use dairy milk because that dairy milk will definitely start to curdle and get a little weird. So you don't wanna keep that one as long, but you can definitely show off your work to your friends, your family, whoever you're gonna Zoom with or FaceTime with later on. All right, you guys, how's it looking? I think these are looking really good. Okay, we have one more stop in the ocean, my friends. Do you remember which zone it is? That's right. It's the sunlight zone. All right, everyone. So the sunlight zone, this is where we're going to find about 90% of marine life. Now, the sunlight zone only goes down to about 600 feet. So when we're looking at our scale on the left, check that out. That sunlight zone is a really tiny fraction of how deep the ocean actually is. So here in the sunlight zone, again, we'll find the base of the ocean food chain, phytoplankton. We'll also find zooplankton. And this is where we'll find a lot of animals that you might think of when we talk about ocean animals, like fish and squid and crabs and sharks and dolphins and whales, so many others, we cannot name them. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to add our last zone. So can anybody figure it out? What are we gonna use? What ingredient do we have left that's going to be our sunlight zone? All right, you got it. It is the rubbing alcohol. Okay, so here is another tip for you guys. Uh, you wanna color your rubbing alcohol. You wanna get it a different color. I'm just looking at my jars here. So let's take a peek at what I've got going on. So we wanna color it a different color. We got a lot of blues going on this one over here. We've got some really good separation here going on. Lots of different colors, but again, mainly blues. I love how this looks down here with that detergent. This is really cool. So what color would you do your twilight zone in? Or I'm sorry, your sunlight zone, not your twilight zone. We've already done that. 
Well, you guys, today I chose, I did like kind of a tropical aqua. I did uh, one drop of blue and one drop of green in rubbing alcohol. And I got to tell you, I even had to dilute it. Look at how deep that color got. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, whatever color you color your rubbing alcohol, and we're just going to pour it right on the top of the previous zone that we did. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Now, rubbing alcohol should float right at the surface. Ooh, and you're gonna see a lot of mixing, little dramatic, and it does kind of bubble a little bit. And be patient, everyone, because this zone takes a little bit, takes a little time to separate out. So check that out. We've got a lot of things happening right here. Lots of bubbling going on. I'm trying to get my camera to focus. Here we go. And while we're watching that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make some more of my sunlight zone since I have that extra deep color of rubbing alcohol that I accidentally made too much of. We're gonna go ahead and use it here. So what are you guys finding? What do you think of this? Are there any other different ingredients that you think you could do to make your ocean zones in a jar? One thing I will tell you all is you can definitely try and play around with these ingredients. And if you want to get really, really sciencey, you can actually um, check out the density of different solutions or different liquids. And that is what we're working with today is all these different liquids have different densities. So that is exactly why they're layering on top of one another. Of course, the ocean zones aren't characterized by that. What are they characterized by? You've got it, the amount of light that comes through or really doesn't come through in some cases. All right, you guys, it looks like we've got some great ocean zones going on. Again, if you have any questions about this, if you're making any observations, go ahead and type that into the YouTube chat. You guys are doing awesome. So today, that was a lot of fun. We learned a lot about ocean zones. And I think our ocean zones in a jar went pretty well. What do you guys say? Now, I think if I were to do this again, let's go ahead and look at my jars and kind of observe them. If I were to do this again, I might use some different colors, um, especially for this one here. It looks really, really dark. And this one is looking really cool. And in fact, why don't I do this? I am going to pick these up and we're gonna put them in front of the camera and we're gonna see if they look any different. No, not so much. So let your ocean zones kind of sit and settle. See what they end up looking like. I really like this one. This one's really fun. This almost looks like it's sand in there. That one's really cool. So I encourage you to experiment and your ocean jars are going to look really cool. Again, you don't have to use the colors. Maybe next time I'll use a bunch of primary colors. And so we can play around with that to see what different colors might look like um, in these jars. Like if you did red contrasting with yellow and green and blue, I think that would look really, really cool. Well, you all did an awesome job today, and I do want to show you again, I'm not going to put our ingredients back up, but here's our little recipes, and this is exactly what we did today with our ocean zones in the jar. So we mimicked that trench, that deep, dark abyss, whoops, excuse me, let me... There we go, that <laughs> deep dark abyss, that midnight zone, the twilight zone, and lastly, that sunlight zone. So I encourage you all to play around with this, see what you see, see if you can find some different materials to use. I'd be really curious if somebody used um, honey to see if that might work a little bit differently for your ocean zones. So I encourage you to play around with it and have a lot of fun too. Now, I also wanna encourage you all to visit Earth Echo's website, take a deep dive into some of our ocean resources. We have a lot there to discover. While you're on our website at earthecho.org, go ahead and make a donation if you'd like to support our programs. We'd really appreciate it. Now, also, I want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I do want to let you know we are giving a giveaway, so, or we're doing a giveaway right now, so if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, 
then hop on over to our Facebook page and you will see all the details about the giveaway we have currently happening. So again, subscribe to our YouTube channel and this is where you can find all of our virtual events here at Earth Echo, like more Snack Size Science, all of these videos are recorded. You can come back, watch them again, share them with any friends or family members that you think might be interested. We do a lot of virtual events each month here at Earth Echo, including interviewing professionals that work in marine science fields. And we have a lot of fun. So speaking of fun, I hope you guys did have fun today. I hope you've learned something along the way. And here at Earth Echo International, we hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and keep exploring. Bye-bye, everyone.